Hey guys, JT Tran here. Now, Heather, let's talk about how, if you're an Asian guy from overseas, how do you talk to a white girl from America? So, you, your friends are some Fabi guys, fresh off the boat, right? And there is a large kind of cultural and dating gap that they might not be used to when they come from China or Vietnam and come here. Um, what are some things that you've seen that they do that makes it a little bit awkward, you know, for you as like a you know all American girl? Um, well, one thing is, like, let's just say we're just talking like in public or whatever. Um, are you making? facial expressions that I can read, like, mm -hmm. are you happy with what I'm saying? Are you responding to this in a positive way? I gotta be able to read that. Right, right. I mean, that's what I call the Asian poker face. We don't realize this, but we're not culturally inclined to express ourselves, like facially, but you have to. And this is especially true if you don't speak English very well. Right? So you need to express yourself through your body because the first thing she sees is your face. So you gotta smile, you you know, when you're talking you have to express yourself more than just your words and through your body language. And the great thing about that is even if you don't speak English very well, she can still pick up the, the your signals through your body and your facial expressions. So be sure to express yourself, you know, facially and through your body language. Uh, I think mentally, guys that come here from China and just overseas, is it is a di different dating culture, yeah. okay, from what you're used to. So I think uh, girls expect you to approach them. It's basically common and it's expected, especially when you're at in you know, the nightlife. Women go out to bars and clubs for a reason. They're there to hang out with their friends, but they're also there to socialize. These bars and clubs are meant as a social arena. They don't go there just to, you know, to be alone. They go there to talk to guys and be talked to, right? Um, so they expect you to approach. Uh, they expect you to lead. Very important. You lead. If you call the mob, you know, I think, and you would agree with me, that you hate it when the guy says, hey, uh, what are you doing? Uh, do you want to see a movie? Uh, what movie do you oh, see? Yeah, like, uh, do what, what time? <laughs> yeah, you got like that. some horror stories. <laughs> she expects you to lead, okay? Um, what else? Oh, and just, yes, uh, I think here in America, sexuality is a little bit more embraced than it is in Asia. So women tend to be more friendly, the more flirty, the more sexually adventurous. Um, not that all women are easy and you shouldn't take it from that perspective, but they are a little bit less inhibited when it comes to sex. Mm -hmm. right? um, and also, there are certain kind of dating traditions that we don't really do the same. I, I remember this one student and he met this girl and they've been on a couple of dates, things were going good. I think they'd even kissed and everything like that. He's all excited, this is like his first American girlfriend. And then they held hands and he was so excited, he rushed home, went on his Facebook and changed his relationship status to in a relationship with her. And then he gets this panic call from the girl, he's like, what did you do? My dad and brother saw this blah. And he's like, wait, aren't we dating? And I was like, I was like, talking to him. I was like, why did you do that? I was like, I thought we were dating. He's like, in what world is like, you know, because you've only been a couple of dates and you haven't slept together or anything like that. Um, but apparently from in China, where it's just a little bit slower, so holding hands is sort of a sign that you're in a serious relationship. Wow. I know. I mean, like, how would you as an American girl, how, like, how do you progress from, from just first date to casually kind of dating to we're getting a little bit more serious and now we're like in a relationship like what's the evolution for you well i guess we'll just take that nightclub example mm -hmm. um first of all take like take the lead um i actually i have a friend who was telling me about how this guy approached her last weekend and i mean right um, right approach he was very attractive to her i mean it was just everything was perfect um but he was not he was not owning that room that you know you need. He was not um, starting discussions. He was not leading the conversation. He was not doing the the things to indicate to her, hey, if we're driving together, you know, in, in life, and you're on the passenger side, I'm gonna take you the where you want to go, where it's good. Um, so she was just 
not super interested, but because she was so attracted to him, she's like, you know what, just give me He your doesn't number. need to be just, intelligent. Yeah, just give me your number. Guy didn't call, even after a week, didn't call. Well, you know what, she was pissed after that. You know, just, you're not even gonna call me after a week? Don't bother, you know? You right. gotta, you gotta do, what is it, like two, three days after? Well, you gotta do Well, we're actually like maybe a, a day or two, right? You don't, you don't wanna wait too long. Right, no, so stay on the radar. So after you progress from, you know, meeting and approaching, getting the phone number and going forward with that, again, have an idea of what you wanna do with her. Do, I know you wanna, you want to please her, you want to make her happy by asking her what are the things you want to do? Why don't you find out on that date? Do do an activity if it's like scary, like oh my god, I don't want to I don't want to do the wrong thing. So pick something fun, pick something easy, ease your way into that, find out her interests and the next one, you know, actually take her where she mentioned she want to go. So don't don't worry so much about is that first date perfect? Do something and take the lead. Okay. <laughs> So after the first date, let's say now you've been on a couple of dates. Things are good. Like what is, like how does, let's assume again, this is like a foreign guy. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the signal of, of what's happening here? Um, I would look about like how, how is she answering your calls? Is she always there? If when you ask her, when she's available, is she giving you dates? Like, is she making herself available for you? Is she clearing her calendar for mm -hmm. you? Is she immediately answering your texts? You know, is she, does she actually want to talk to you? Right. You know, if she's still there, if she's still responding, you should take it further. Right. Although, be aware of this. At this level, where you've gone on a couple of dates, it's still what we call like casual dating. So, which means that she is maybe seeing other guys, okay? Which means that you might be seeing other girls, whether it's sexual or not. Um, the point is you're not exclusive. This is another thing that might be new to some of you guys. Simply agreeing to go on a date with a person does not mean they're signing like an exclusive contract with you. She's probably going on dates with other guys. So don't get butt hurt if she's like da dating because you're not exclusive yet. So. To get to that, you have to start going from the casual to the serious. So how do you transition from casual dating to serious dating? You're not going to be like, hey, hey, do you want to be, uh, you know, can we be boyfriend and girlfriend? Yeah, no, no, don't, don't like, don't. Check yes or no. Yeah, <laughs> don't do anything like that. And don't make it too much of a big deal either. Okay. Because if there's too much pressure, like. I mean, I've got a career, I've got other things I'm doing. You've got your hustle, yep. I don't need the added pressure of, oh my gosh, this guy needs to like have some sort of like, you know. Commitment. Yeah, like it, it does depend on the girl. This is just for me. But um, yeah, you just, it depends on the girl, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> well, I would say that if the relationship is meant to go there, it will naturally evolve where you go from casual and you're seeing other people remember that. And this can be like up to five, 10 dates. You might even be sleeping together and it does not mean that you're just serious. You know, as it goes and if it's meant to go, you'll start to sort of um, lose contact with the other girls that you're seeing. And she'll start to do that. And it'll just kind of evolve to the point where, hey, without even realizing it, you're the only guy that she's going on dates with. And she's the only girl that you're going on dates with. There's this sort of natural evolution. And yes, you can make it official. Although I would just be a little bit, um, unless she's coming from a very conservative background, but if she's coming from like, you know, typical kind of like, you know, liberal American girl, uh, that sort of serious talk and labeling can be kind of scary, right? So <laughs> it's fine to say like, hey, I, I really like you and we've been dating and you know, um, you can have like the sex talk where, you know, it's like, check each other to make sure you don't have STDs. And that's, that can be kind of serious, but that's also a very important thing um, to American girls, especially if you want to be serious and monogamous and not see each other. If you, you know, want to do that, like you do have to have that sex talk. I know it's kind of verboten in, in certain countries. That's like, you know, why would you do that? Uh, because you don't want to get STDs. You don't want to give her STDs. So you might have to have that kind of sex talk. Um, and then from that serious, now you're in that really kind of exclusive, monogamous relationship. 
um, and then maybe even moving in together. Like, have you ever been <laughs> into that position where, like, you have to make that as a woman, you're making that decision of moving in with a guy? Yeah, I mean, I live with my boyfriend right mm -hmm. now. Um, for us, it was more of a well. I'm moving to California, and I was living two hours away from mm -hmm. him. So, just the idea of oh, I want to go see you, but I mean. You know, I have to get on the freeway like five different freeways to see you. Like that's a long distance relationship right yeah. there. Even though we're in the same state in the same general area, um, so for me it was more of a. It makes more sense. I'm over here anyway all the time. Might as well. You've got the room. You know, so it just kind of was more comfortable and made more sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what typically ends up happening. Yeah. Again, this is one of the differences uh, from here versus like overseas is. Typical like cohabitation doesn't really happen until you're married. Here, cohabitation, basically moving in together, typically happens before you get married because it's sort of like a, a trial period. Because if you can't like live together for a year, how are you going to live together for like 50 years, right? <laughs> um, so in America, it's, it's sort of assumed that if you're getting serious, you give them a drawer, mm -hmm. right? You give them a drawer, maybe two drawers to put your to put your clothes in. You bring over a toothbrush so when you sleep over, and when things evolve, then it'd be like you know. What more than just a toothbrush or a drawer? Here's the key to the apartment. Here's the key to the house. So that's sort of the evolution of going from just like your first date to your casual to your serious, your monogamous, to moving in together, and who knows uh, to even marriage. Okay, guys. Hopefully that answered your questions when it comes to the differences in, in dating here versus overseas. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Have you dated outside of your race? Wait, what? I've actually never been in a relationship. Oh, yet. I find that very hard to believe. Men, she is single and she is ready. So kind of just starting it off as a basic, I'm going to get to know you as a friend mm -hmm. and then exactly. take you out, maybe, hopefully later. <laughs> maybe. Like someone, like, I'm going to take you out. It's like, uh, no, you're too cocky. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's Kelly Duhane again, and we're here to ask Asian women what type of men do they prefer? White, black, Asian, other? Let's find out.